edition we toddle into Vancouver it is the 14 C fun reunion for former employees and it is July the 19th 2022 and we are heading off to um, Mahoney's deck in False Creek in Vancouver and what a beautiful city this is but C fun dominated the airwaves in Vancouver for about four and a half five decades it uh, it was just an incredible powerhouse of a radio station. And the former employees, um, some of the former employees are getting together uh, to celebrate that great AM radio station located at 1410 on the AM dial. So we're just coming into Vancouver now and I've got to turn on Quebec and we will be heading into Falls Creek and uh, meeting up with uh, some of the former staff members of 14 C Fun Radio in Vancouver. Funsters. Lee? Yes, Lee oh. Smith. Yes. C Fun and CKBN. Rock. Okay, what years were you at C Fun? Uh, starting 1972, ending in 77, with a gap in there when I left to get my commercial pilot license and came back. So I want to ask you about that. You, you, out of a lot of the broadcasters that I've met over my years, yep. you kind of, I would think, elevated your career a wee bit. Not that broadcasting is <laughs> not lower, but oh, you, you mean when I became a, a, a doctor, a <laughs> neurologist? A, a saver of uh, babies through brain operations? No, I didn't do that. Well, you probably <laughs> did, maybe because were you not the head of the Saskatchewan Air Ambulance? I did, yes. So I just ran tell me that. about that. Well, that was a fascinating job. Um, I didn't want it. They talked me into taking it. And three weeks or so into the job, I ended up uh, watching a premature baby, less than four pounds, being flown to to here, actually, to uh, to Vancouver, to have a brain operation done, and uh, it saved that child's life. And that's when I knew, hey, I can be proud of what's going on here. So. Big, big, big deal. Big, big phase of my life for four years to run the Provincial Air Ambulance Program. For the province of Saskatchewan? Correct, yes. Right. Where did you have more fun? <laughs> more fun? Wow. Yeah. Well, that's a tough one because when you throw it all together, um, you know, I, I did this morning watch a couple of airplanes come around Point Grey heading for the harbor. And the float flying phase of things was really a lot of fun. The radio stuff though, man, I'll tell you, I was I was hooked by a virus when I was about nine. And I still, you know, really, really enjoy it. And I managed to get up to radio station owner level and sold out. So good thing. But you're still a ham operator. Oh I am, yes, I'm a so regular you, you really on the air. You encompass almost all aspects of broadcasting. No, other, I don't smaller know. audience on the ham radio, uh, though, than compared to 50,000 watts of, of uh, directional power uh, from Sea Fun right up the coast. You don't realize how large that signal is until I took a job flying for Air North in Whitehorse. And it was the very first station to be able to come in over the horizon at night. And the very last 
last one to uh, fade out in the morning. So huge, huge signal heading north through Alaska and BC. Wow. So who hired who hired you at CFAR? It was Simon Ginsberg who hired me, followed up by uh, being, if you will, rehired uh, by uh, by the Chum organization and J. Robert Wood, and then uh, the great, great uh, work by uh, Chuck McCoy, who gave me the leave of absence to go get my licenses and a guarantee of coming back. So I'm always grateful to Chuck for that handshake. You can come back anytime you call me. So back in 1981, when I started at CFUN, there were two amazing people that worked in the promotion department. Really? Who are those people? I'm looking at one right now. And no sense in looking around, <laughs> Curtis. You, uh, it, 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 when, I, when I had the opportunity of moving to a major market radio station, I was blown away uh, by the amount of work that the promotional department actually did in getting the radio station out into the community, whether it was t-shirts, albums, stickers, promotions with clients or whatever. How long were you at CFUN and when did you start? I was there for, uh, first of all, it was a job to do while I was in university. Oh. Sort, of like, sort of like a part-time summer job okay. that lasted eight and a half years. Wow. Um, easily the best job I ever had. Uh, so um, I was there from 70, September 76 to basically September 84. Okay. Uh, no, no, uh, sorry, no, uh, August 76. To, to probably November '84, so not quite eight and a half years, and um, it was it was just a riot. Um, so I started production, producing commercials and promos uh, with Nelson Millman and uh, Vince Cowden, and then Robin Hagenbuck came in and joined us, and just a, a blast. I operated uh, a Sunday night show, uh, Wolfman from tape, and did wow. requests, and wow. we, I had all kinds of cartridges that Wolfman had recorded for us, custom stuff. Even did, ran it to the point where people thought Wolfman was actually in the control room of the wow. station. It was fantastic. And um, and then I, I uh, uh, produced the morning show with uh, Jim Holt when, uh, when Nelson um, uh, took a break or was on vacation, and then uh, and then I did that job uh, full time for a while, and uh, and then I filled in for uh, Nelson with um, uh, with Fred a, a few times, and all of that that, that was just other than <laughs> other than having to get up at 4:15 in the morning, which was I lived in almost in Poco, and that was like the bitter most late latest time I could possibly wake up was 4:15. Uh, well, not that I woke up. I always got a phone call from uh, Billy Williams, who's, who did Graveyards. And uh, uh, so other than that, 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 that was just uh, just loads of laugh do it, laughs doing the, the morning show uh, with those guys. And um, I, and, and million stories, as, as with any, you know, any person that's working in a radio station for any length of time. It's just crazy times. The thing that hits me now, now that, you know, I'm the sage, we're all the sage, is this was, you know, 76 to, you know, 84. Uh, when I started there in 76, the oldest person in the building, well, it, w it would have been Ron Carabine, right? Yeah, so, so Ron was, you know, he was like, oh, and he, but Ron at the time was probably 50, but he may as well have been 100. Um, and then uh, uh, everybody else, rea in reality, the people I thought, I was 20, so the people I thought were old were probably 29, 30. And I, I think about it today, here's the number one rock station uh, west of Toronto, the number, you, either the number one or the number two station in Vancouver. In the summer of '76, we had a weekly cum of 550,000. We were number one that summer, giving away a thousand dollars virtually every day, uh, all day long for months. And um, and here's here's Chum entrusting this a very important radio station in Vancouver to a bunch of 20-somethings. Like we were all twenty something, and we're running this major market station. It was absolutely unbelievable. Like at the time, it didn't occur to me. It's like, wait a minute, we're all too young to be doing this. How? Why is this working? Yeah. And yet it worked. It worked. Um, and I was uh, I was hired uh, by Chuck McCoy because um, my band did a gig at the Jewish Community Center on Oak Street. The MC was uh, Tom Lucas. Uh, Tom and I uh, went out uh, on a, on a break. We went out side and smoked a uh, funny cigarette and he goes you know my boss would like to meet you and I go really he said yeah you know uh, here, here and he gave me a phone number he said call this number ask for Chuck McCoy tell him Tom Lucas said you should call what I didn't realize is they had been looking for somebody and I knew a lot about music and music recording and editing music and all of that 
And that's how I got, got that's how I got hired. So Gord, you don't mind I do a little sure. So Harry, what are you doing now? Oh Wally's burgers in uh New Westminster. No, no, we're in uh, Vancouver and in North Carolina. Not New Westminster. No, no, we closed that. Oh, you did close yeah. that. Okay, okay. So, when were you at Seafun? What years? Uh, 2000 to 2007. Can you get that light there? Oh, yeah, okay. 2000 to 2007. So, what did you do there? To operate it. For who? Uh, for Seafun. For. Do you remember team. which announcers? Uh, it was all the talk guys. Eh? It was, eh? Yeah, yeah like okay. uh, Al and uh, you know, Joel Leary, you know, okay. and all those guys. Right? So that's when Seafun had kind of shied no music. away from the music. There was no music. And it was it went all talk. Yeah. So what was it like operating for the uh, for, for Joel Leary and all of those guys? It was good. It was fun. Yeah? Yeah, it was fun. Great. Great. So. Uh, were you at the first reunion? No, I didn't come. This no, one you're this coming. This is the first one. Excellent. So how's business at Wally's Burger? It's great. Great. Yeah. Oh, we're glad you could make it. Yeah, thanks. Okay. <laughs> At MJM Furniture. Oh no! <laughs> and we're still not talking. It was a Boxing Day sale, and it was pretty nasty. I had to endure Rob Collins for how many years? Every Boxing Day, it ruined my Christmas. Oh, I, I bought all my furniture, all, about, all my furniture from MJM. Thanks, Casey. Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah, I did. So, so Casey White, John Tanner. John Tanner. Oh. John Tanner. I, uh, one of the original C Fun good guys. Yes. Well, the second, the second round because it was Frosty and Fred and Al and Red and Tom and who did I miss there? I, did I say Frosty? Yeah. 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 Okay. So and then I came in sixty. They started in sixty two, I think, and then I came in sixty four in September. There you go. Uh, I think Buzz Lebo was there, but that was before. Buzz. Anyway. Yeah. Oh, my. Um, but oh yeah, and I used to listen from Kelowna because I was a DJ at CKOV in Kelowna, and I would. Listen, I listened to Red back at WX wow. and, and then Seafun because we could get it at night in Kelowna. It would skip right. in. And so, yeah, I was, you know, I was totally on top of that. As a matter of fact, I met Red and Carol the year that they were married in 63 and he came up for his honeymoon through the Okanagan. And I was doing a thing called Okanagan Holiday Caravan. And I set up an interview with him at a lookout along the way. And that's where I first met Carol. And I said, I'd love to work for you. You know, he says, well, we'll keep in touch. And a year later, you know. You got the job. He phoned me one day while that's I was on the That's how it works. Yeah. That's how it works. I know. That's exactly yeah. how it works. So you had two stints at CFUN? I did. When it was CKVN in 1970, I came back. I'd been on LGFM. I went back from, uh, well, it was left C5 to 67 to go to LG. Everybody went over there. Mulligan, Latchamore, yeah. Daryl B. All his people went over to LG. Yeah. And then in 68, uh, the FM station opened, and our, the late, great, real Roy Hennessy and Daryl B. also dearly departed. Two beautiful people. Daryl, I was just loved him so much. Uh, and myself, we all did voice tracks uh, for LG FM. Well, John Rungi and then later J.B. Shane came and Bob Ness was there and uh, he was a draft doctor. And, uh, yeah, many good years. And then after that, I went to see KVM. Okay, yeah. Okay. Thanks, John. Thank you. One of the most creative writers of commercials and creative 
history ever? <laughs> okay. Is that what you meant to say? That's exactly what you meant. I'll go for it. Okay. Yeah. Mike was at CFUN for how many years? Uh, 4th of July, 88 until I believe September, it was 97, September or October of 97. So almost, I didn't get my 10 year pin, I got my five year pin, but they didn't give me my 10 year pin. So, a lot of people that will be viewing this, some will be in the broadcast business, but it'll also be up on YouTube, okay. have really no idea what a copywriter is. Why does the word copy enter into a radio commercial? You write and, uh, and take care of the production of radio commercials. Yes. So when you hear a client or an advertiser on the air, it's somebody like Mike here yes. that takes his writing talent and puts the client's ideas on paper. Yes, exactly. I think the word, the word copy, I think, is a holdover from the newspaper. Ah, era. I got it. Uh, so the, the copy refers to, or can refer to, the script for an ad, of radio, TV, whatever it is. Uh, we don't want to hold up the world here. Radio, TV, uh, newspaper, that's the copy. You write the copy, that is the ad in whatever media it is. Well, what would happen is a salesperson, such as yourself, we go visit the advertiser, uh, discover their needs, figure out how much they want to spend, when do they want to spend it, what do they want to do, gather all that important information to make the ad, then you, in a timely manner, not to start tomorrow, <laughs> we don't do that, uh, would then bring the information to the writer. The writer, there's a few different steps you could do. The writer themselves could then approve the copy with the client, or the writer would give the script to the sales rep to then give to the client for approval. You make any changes in between there, and uh, at that point, you go to production. Today, you produce and you get an MP3 and you email it to the client. Client. Back then, we would make a cassette, and you would have to drive out to visit MGM Furniture oh, and uh, right. Aberdeen Hay. And Vanderveen. Vanderveen Hay, sorry, if I knew I messed <laughs> that up. That's okay, no, no, that's okay. okay. But uh, yeah. yeah, and then once they approve the production, all that, you're booked, it goes on the air, and then we make money, and then the client makes money because the ad is fantastic working. and gets people to the door. So there's a quick synopsis, little tiny glimpse as to what a copywriter or a creative person in a radio station or a television station does. Yes. Anyhow, let's talk about you. No. How'd you get into writing uh, for commercials? How did, how, like, I, you got out of school and just decided I want to write commercials? No, no. Well, at first of all, I got to back up a little bit more because I grew up listening to and loving C-Fun in the 70s. I listened to C-Fun. I answered my phone when required to do that. My sister listened to L CKLG. I hated L I hated CKLG. I love C-Fun. So uh, I love C-Fun, radio, Three Dog Night especially. Um, later on to high school, boys, groups. Uh, I'd like to be on air, so I got into the BCIT program. Oh. And then I discovered, I didn't even know there was such thing as a copywriter when I went oh. to BCIT to take the program. Okay. So then um, uh, they said, well, there's this part of the courses writing. Oh, really? That looks like fun. How about if I do that instead? And after a couple of on-air shifts at BCIT, I decided, yeah, I'd rather do Stu Ferguson, we'll, we'll, we'll talk to Stu in a minute, at Mahoney's in beautiful downtown Vancouver at Falls Creek, and former staff members of one of the greatest radio stations in Western Canada, 14 c Fund, have gathered together here this evening, and just reminiscing about the old days and when AM radio was king and music on radio was king, and one of the best voices on radio in Vancouver on 1410, my good friend Stu Ferguson. Rob, you're, I, I'm going to be serious now. It is so much fun being back with all these people that I work with. And I don't think workplaces are like this anymore. Like the, the, the friendships that we have with the people that are here today are just so strong. We've had so many laughs. And for me, it was an honor to work at a radio station like CFUN. I was mentioning it earlier. I was a hockey fan. So for, for me to work on a station like CFUN would be like the Montreal Canadiens and all of a sudden I'm sitting on the bench with Jean Beliveau 
Yvonne Cornwaye, Gump Worsley. That was me. That was the honor of being on air. And Jack Casey's here today. Steve Herringer, another one who lives right near me, he's not here tonight. But the honor of being on air with these legends of radio, Jim Holt, Daryl B, Fred Latrimal, my all-time favorite, and all these people that were uh, behind the scenes, salespeople, uh, and Rob. So Rob and I have so many stories of being on remote. And you have to understand that doing a remote is five hours of standing around with a lot of time in between the clients. And we made a lot of jokes. He'd have, he'd have some really weird perspective on something and we would argue between cuttings until the next cutting, literally. Would we not? Absolutely. Was there one, not one time that I showed up with a hundred dollar bill? Oh, I love this story. <laughs> and it was at Montebello Jewelers. Montebello Jewelers in Guilford. <laughs> But, you know, I look back at those remotes, and that's where I learned my love for, for sales. Uh, but, you know, the salespeople that are here, Barry O'Donnell, holy cow, you know, what a legend, right? Now, Stu, how did you get started at Seafund? How did you get hired at Seafund? Was it a dream of yours always to work in a major market station? I mean, just give me a brief history from Seafund prior, which station were you, to get to Seafund? Well, it's a, it's a great story because the, the gentleman working the camera uh, is connected to my story at Seafun. And I don't know if you knew that. I didn't know that. Yeah, so I, was, I started out in Whitehorse in the Yukon Territory at CKRW. Very young guy. I think I was 18 when I started there. And I hear this guy on the radio and I'm thinking, this guy doesn't sound like anybody else here. They all sound like small town announcers. And it was Lee Smith. So Lee kind of took, took me under his wing and, and got me going and I would listen to him and hear the nuances and it, so that was my start from there I went to Winnipeg and uh, we have connections in Winnipeg and then Pat St. John was the program director and so I'm a West Coast boy so I always said I, I need to get back to Vancouver but I need to get to see you radio stations. Yep. Tell us about that. Uh, it was the greatest job ever. Ever. Did, did the foothold or the the years that you spent at Seafund, did that give you a base or were you in broadcasting before Seafund? Uh, I was in broadcast before Seafund just for a little bit and but Seafund was basically my springboard okay. to everything else and then once I got to Honolulu it just I had fabulous mentors there so I was there I've been there 36 years, Wow! and it was a great ride. What was your role there, Patty? Um, started in sales and uh, moved my way up to um, president general manager of a cluster. Wow. wow. Out of Cox Media, out of Atlanta. Wow. It was the best job ever. Well, this is so wonderful that you've chosen to be a big part of this reunion. You were a main um, uh, mm -hmm. individual in organizing, looking after it, along with uh, uh, Nancy, Nancy Wall. Yay. And we'll get to Nancy in a minute. And uh, flying all the way from Hawaii back home here to Vancouver. Is yes. Vancouver your home originally? Uh, Calgary. Oh, Calgary, okay. Western Canadian girl. Absolutely. And uh, joining us this evening uh, for yeah. the Seafun reunion. I wouldn't be anywhere else, and I'm glad I could do a little bit on the weather. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I was really hoping that it would be okay. It wouldn't matter if it was pouring rain. It doesn't matter. I'm with all my friends and colleagues here. But well, we all have wonderful memories of you and Curtis and Leah in the promotion Thank department. You. Because the sales department worked closely with the uh, promotional department yes. in trying to get stuff for clients and on air and all that kind of oh, stuff. Well, you yeah. know you know the term. Oh, yeah. yeah. Begging for a pen and a coffee mug. <laughs> a t-shirt. <laughs> and a t-shirt. I got a client that likes an album. How many can I have? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, Patty, thank you kindly, okay? Thank you. Thank you for doing a fabulous job in organizing hey, this event. Hey, it takes our team. We're awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Nancy, Hi. 
Yay! Thanks. Nancy, I have the pleasure of working with Nancy in the sales department at 14C Fund. Nancy's family is um, a broadcast family. I, I, I think anybody that recognizes the name Wall would recognize that your father was a um, well-known broadcaster across Canada. Yeah, he, he was great. And um, he actually ran a chain of radio stations um, across Canada. And they ended up, a portion of them, being bought by Chum. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so interesting. those were actually in the, the, I think the ones out of the Maritimes. I can't remember okay. the exact ones. but. So, yeah. you, so you were born and raised in Montreal. Yes. It's quite a story there. We won't get into that here. <laughs> and then your father came and took over CJOR. Yes, we were threatened that my sister and I would be kidnapped by the FLQ. Right. At which point my dad said, that's enough, we're right. out of here. And we moved to Vancouver. I stayed behind to finish school and then came out. Best move possible. Right. Still go back to Montreal and love it. But right. This is home for all my adult life, and yeah. So when, when you got into radio, Nance, did you get into sales right away, or were you on yeah. air, or were you in the promotion department, copy, or I, I was in the news department at CJOR oh. for the first five years. Okay. Um, more of a detail research person. Okay. And amazing guys. I've okay. always been treated really well by all the guys I've worked with, and it was primarily men at the time. Sure. I was the first woman in a news department right. um, and then Pamela Martin on TV right. and then um, it kind of went from there to being in traffic and promotions and then I thought if I'm working 25 hours a day then I'll go into sales. <laughs> well the money was for some people exactly. I recall the first time I met you I had a client by the name of Russ Simpson, ROS Advertising. Oh, gosh, yeah. I had scheduled a meeting with Russ to talk about a promotion with one of his clients, and I think it was a transmission client. Uh, little did I know that he was not a fan of 14C Fund. I found that out later because Russ was a sales rep at your former radio station, LG CKLG. And CKLG and C Fund have quite a history in Vancouver, competing for the same audience. They really were the two most powerful, dynamic AM radio, AM music radio stations on the dial in Vancouver. LG was at 73, 730 on the AM dial. C Fun was at 1410 on the opposite end of the dial. But those two stations fought hard. I found out later on that uh, that might have had some hard feelings with Russ. But anyhow, my appointment was about 10 or 1030. I can't remember the exact time. I pull into his driveway in South Surrey. You and Russ are walking out. And as, as we're walking out, Russ says, Rob, I'd like you to meet Nancy from LG. That's the very first time we met. <laughs> I forgot all about I that. I haven't. You're I right. haven't forgot that. Yeah. I know that. He was living in South Surrey in that big home there. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So that was the very first time we met. Little did I know later on we'd be working together in the sales department. Yeah. Barry hired, hired me. I looked it up because I was embarrassed I didn't know the years. Um, thank you, Tricia Hanna. Um, for, uh, so I was there 91 to 97. Wow. Well, yes. good run. Great. Good run. Great people. Yeah. yeah. Couldn't ask for better people to work with. Yeah. For some organization. I secretly admired the Moffat Force. They're totally different operations. Totally. But Very the difference aggressive. was, the, the, the difference was, the Moffat boys dressed in black, dark suits, where the chum echelon seemed a little more relaxed in their dress style. They were a little more casual. They were a little, but, but to me, in my mind, I saw the Moffat group of stations, the owners, the managers, the sales guys, they all had, like Don McTavish, I don't know if you remember Don McTavish. Don had that look as well, and I often said to him, do they teach you how to dress when you're working at Moffat? Because you guys all, they look sharp. But you all dress very similar. It's only when head office came to town. Ah, that was it. Okay. <laughs> so that would be Randy Moffat and who else would have been from head uh, office? It was Randy because he was very young when his dad died and Lloyd had built up the station. Wow. wow. And um, so he took it over later after other people were helping him and he, um, he did a great job. Yeah. He actually invested in cable heavily oh. and that's when he sold the radio portion he okay kept the cable, cable side yeah steady checks rolling in every month yeah 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 hey basically. nancy it was wonderful working with you you too huh? i uh I, I i admired the way 
you kept your desk and wondered, how does she do it? Look at, there's a pile there, there's a pile there, there's a stack of papers there, there's a pack. But that must be her own system of selling. And it was successful for you. I'll, I'm I'll tell you your one life. secret, because <laughs> okay. my dad was the opposite. I think I could figure out where everything was. He, in when he was walking through in CJOR and the sales people had messy desks like I had. <laughs> no, your desk wasn't messy. It, it was neatly messy organized. Yes. Yeah. Well, thank you, Doug. But he, he would take, after a week, he would take everything and throw it in the garbage on somebody's desk. Oh, that time. <laughs> Yeah, well, those, those. I won't. I won't name names, but there are a few of them who are notorious. Yeah. <laughs> digging the garbage. Getting there. Because they knew what they had, but he was just like, nope. Yeah. No, it's gotta look neat. Yeah. Yeah. So we wouldn't have approved of my desk, probably. <laughs> nah, I, I I always say that because you had a system. Everybody has a system, and and whatever works for you, it, it works. And uh, you had a great career as a sales rep in radio. Now I've just found out you've had some other responsibilities and duties in radio, from news to other things. So okay. you've had a really good crack at what radio can offer somebody that was interested in getting into broadcasting I at was, that time. I was blessed. I flew in helicopters. I did traffic reports from helicopters. It's, uh, if there's any business that you couldn't... I, I couldn't love the business more. Yeah, no, and it showed. When I was in it. I, it I was so blessed. Thanks, Nancy. Yeah. Hey, So what's, uh, what's this? Yeah,